We're staying on Chaknan Tor and we're now going to the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, ALMA. Before we join them live, let's find out about them in this video. We're now going live to the observatory, um, and I can see two people there outside. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, well, we can hear you. Hi. Uh, could, you, could you tell us who you are and where you are? Welcome to Alma. We are here um, outside the technical building in the uh, operations support facility at the 3000 meter near San Pedro de Atacama in Northern Chile. My name is Rudiger Kneisel. Um, I've just started as an um, astronomer in the uh, science operations of the ALMA project. And uh, my name is Louis Nee. I'm the uh, lead scientist for the Assembly Integration Verification Group here at the USM. 
Okay, um, so you're not right at the summit then. 3,000 meters is probably a, a better working environment, I guess. Yes, and that's why the OSF is down here at 3,000 meters, where we can work on antennas uh, with, uh, with a clear mind. Sure, yeah. Okay, could you tell us something about ALMA, what it's going to do, and why it's going to be at Chachnantor? So, um, ALMA is going to be a revolutionary new um, telescope in, in the area of millimeter and submillimeter um, astronomy. And it comprises um, at least 66 uh, antennas up at, at 5,000 meters. And the idea started um, already in the 80s when in uh, Europe and in North America and in Asia um, and Japan, um, people um, had, had the idea, um, certain science goals that, that they wanted to achieve. So um, there is in the, in the, in the um, extragalactic science, um, it should be possible with a telescope to see um, carbon in uh, normal galaxies like the Milky Way at high, at, at, uh, high redshift, uh, distant uh, at times before the solar system um, formed. Uh, and what does, what does carbon tell us about the early galaxies? Um, car car carbon is, is the uh, base of our life form and uh, we can see carbon far back um, to, to the early times uh, when galaxies formed um, much further than we can do in uh, optical or infrared at the moment. Um, and, and the other science goal was um, to uh, uh, see uh, the formation of stars, protostars in the planetary disks, and um, to image those with, with high uh, precision, with precise images, uh, with a resolution better than 0.1 arc second, which is the apparent size of a fly just up at the mountain top that you see in the background. Oh, wow, okay. So, um, are you going to be using ALMA for your own research as well? Um, well, I'm, I have um, worked on the cosmic microwave background um, and uh, particularly uh, on uh, secondary anisotropies there, the Sunya Absalovich effect, where one can see clusters of galaxies um, when the cosmic microwave background shines through those. And um, ALMA, with the fantastic sensitivity, um, will be able to see particularly the fine detail in, in those at the high redshift for, for the early clusters, the most massive objects in the universe, um, ALMA will be able to give uh, very good images of uh, what those look like. And they are difficult to observe um, otherwise at, uh, with optical or X-ray telescopes at those high redshifts. Right. And, um, and uh, Lewis, what about you? What are your research interests? Okay. Well, my research interests are mostly centered around uh, the, the formation of stars and planetary systems. And so ALMA is going to be a fantastic in instrument for discovering the details on how, how stars form, how planets form around them, and how uh, new solar systems evolve chemically to produce the, uh, the, the types of molecules that eventually lead to, uh, to uh, life on, on, on planets. So with ALMA's great sensitivity and wonderful resolution, we will be able to see directly inside the nurseries where stars are forming and where planetary systems are forming around them. So it's going to be great for, uh, for my research. Great. That sounds really exciting. Uh, what is the time frame for ALMA? How long will it take before it's fully operational and available to the rest of us? Well, at the moment, ALMA is in its construction phase. Uh, we have more than a dozen antennas here at the OSF right now. Uh, two of which are now being outfitted with all of the ALMA equipment which is necessary for it to make scientific observations. And we're in a phase of testing the antennas right now. Uh, the early science with ALMA up at the high site at 5,000 meters should start in 2011. Uh, but before then we hope to have uh, antennas up there. Uh, by the end of this year we hope to have three antennas up at the high site uh, doing interferometry already. And then, um, and so you said that this is a totally multinational project, I understand. So what, what is everyone contributing to the project? Well, the three major partners in the ALMA project